So today I wanted to try to answer a question, and that question is, how do you create a simple countdown timer with Bolt? Now this has been asked a few times uh, on Discord, on YouTube, and I think the most recent one was on Twitter. So I want to take a few minutes to show you how I have been able to do that with Bolt Visual Scripting. Now what I've got here is just the default scene. I've removed the skybox and changed the background color of the camera just to make it a little bit easier to look at. But the real star of the show here is the timer panel. And this is just a panel that's a container for this uh, text element here, which is gonna display how much time is left on the timer, as well as these buttons here. We've got a start, reset, and a stop button, which are hopefully pretty self-explanatory as to what they're going to do. Now to get started here, uh, we're gonna add on a flow machine and a flow graph to the timer panel. So I'm gonna add that flow machine, then I'm gonna go into my project folders, and create that new flow macro. I'm just gonna call this simple timer. I'm gonna drag and drop that into the flow machine like so. So the next thing I need to do is create a bunch of variables and these are gonna hold references to the timer text object as well as the buttons so we can update the text as well as register clicks on those buttons. And these are gonna be object variables. I'm gonna click on the object tab and then I'm gonna create these uh, one at a time. So timer text and such. I'm gonna give it a type, and then I'm gonna drag in the reference from the scene. Now, if I don't drag in the reference pretty quickly, or um, if I do something else, uh, Bolt's gonna lose reference to what type of thing that variable is meant to be. So I'm gonna drag those in, and then I'm gonna create my buttons as well. Same idea, give it a type, and drag it in. So there we go, we've got references to all of our UI elements, but I need to create one more variable, and this is gonna be the timer duration. This is gonna be of type float, and I'm gonna give it a default value of 10. And this is simply gonna be how long this timer is gonna run for once you press the start button. With that done, I can get into editing the code. So I'm gonna go full screen here. Now, an easy way to do this, uh, to implement this, is to use the built-in bolt uh, uh, timer unit like so. I can then go over to my object variables and drag in the timer duration and connect that to the duration like so. Then in this timer, we have these really convenient uh, outputs here, so to speak. We've got this remaining percentage. And we're gonna take this remaining percentage, and I'm gonna multiply it by the timer duration like so. Then I'm gonna take that value and convert it to um, a string so that I can display it in our text element. I'm then going to search for text text, and I want to do the text text set, and I'm gonna drop in that string value like so. Now I need to tell it which text element is it gonna update, so I'm gonna drag in this timer text and do it like that. And then we need to connect this uh, text text set to the flow, and we want this to happen every tick of the game, every frame, so to speak. So I'm gonna connect it to the tick flow coming out of the timer like that. And there you go, that's the basics of a timer. This will now show us the timer on that text, but what we need to do, we need to trigger this timer. This trigger, um, this timer is nowhere in the flow, it's not gonna get called at all. So what I'm gonna do next is a little more complicated than it needs to be, but the idea there is it's going to allow us to have a little bit more generality, and if you wanna start, stop, or reset this timer in some way that's not connected to these buttons, this will let you do that. So if you're not familiar with custom events, check out the link uh, above, and you can check out the link below uh, to my video on custom events. They're super handy and a great way to kinda of constrain, kinda of control the spaghetti mess that can occur with visual scripting. So I'm gonna add in a unit of custom event, and I'm actually gonna create three of these. Something like that. And the first one's going to be start timer, the next one's gonna be reset timer, and the last one is going to be stop timer. So I'm gonna connect the stop timer to pause, the reset timer to the start, and the start timer is gonna to go to the toggle. Now, if you don't know what all of these different flows mean, you can click on the timer unit, and over here in the graph inspector, they'll give you descriptions of when those flows get called and what they do. Now, we need to do one more thing to these custom events before we can move on. 
Because we're using a timer, we're doing something with time, we need these events to be run as a coroutine. So I'm gonna select each one and turn it and set it to run as a coroutine like so. You can always know if you have a coroutine because these little arrows will show up in the event itself. There's no way this code is gonna run. And we wanna call these events based on a button. So I'm gonna scroll up a little bit and I'm gonna add a unit on click like so. And let's start with the start button. So the start button is gonna come in here. I'm gonna take the reference to that start button, connect it like that. And then what I'm gonna do over here, I'm gonna do a trigger custom event. I'm gonna copy the name of that event in like that. And then since I have three buttons, I'm gonna duplicate this three times and I'm gonna update the button. So here's gonna be the reset button the stop button, and then I'm gonna copy the event names in like that. And that's it, that's all there is to it. So again, I've made this a little more complicated than it needs to be. You could just have these on button clicks go directly into the timer, but by using these custom events, I've added the functionality that I can start, stop, or pause this timer from other scripts and not just from these buttons. So let's go ahead and take a look and see how this works. Going into play mode, nothing happens. If I press start, you can see that we count down as normal. Eventually we're gonna to get to zero. If I press reset, it starts back at 10 and keeps going. Notice when I push reset, it doesn't stop the timer. It just starts it back at 10 and gets going again. If I push the stop button, it pauses, which is great, that's handy. And if I push start again, it's gonna restart where it left off. So there you go, pretty short, pretty sweet. Making a timer in Bolt Visual Scripting is pretty easy to do. You just have to have the right units. So I hope that was useful or interesting. And if it was, think about hitting that like or subscribe buttons. And until next time, happy game designing.